So very early on in my channel, I, I published this video where the sound quality just sucks, and I don't know why I even published it. Uh, I, I have no, I have no excuse. But I fixed the sound, and it's following this intro. I hope you enjoy it. If you've already seen it, it'll be a much more pleasant experience for you. Thank you. Hear that? It's walk time. Jeff Galloway is my hero. Hi, and welcome to the Aegis Runner. Thanks for taking a look at this video. Before I talk about Jeff Galloway's Run Walk Run Method, could you be so kind and subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe icon down in the corner of this video? Thank you so much. So I've been running since I was about 61 years old, and I really have been successful at it, mostly because of Jeff Galloway. Uh, and if you don't know who Jeff is, he's a former Olympian. He ran the 10,000 meter in the 1972 Summer Olympics in Munich. And he's been involved in running ever since then. He's an author. Uh, he has a running store and he trains and coaches. So a very active runner. So he's he's my age or a little older, actually. Uh, so he knows what he's talking about. He's done it and been there. So a few years after the Summer Olympics, Jeff wanted to create a, more of an interest in running in, in beginners. So he started working on this run, walk, run method. And he refined it and worked on it over the next few years. I'll put a link down in the comments. You can go and explore his website where he talks about run, walk, run, among other things, and you can learn all about it. So as I said earlier, I've been using it for the last three or four years myself. I've been able to run quite a few half marathons, a couple of trail marathons. I can never do that without the run, walk, run method. So if you don't know about the run, walk, run method, it's exactly as it sounds. You run for a little bit and you walk for a little bit. You take more frequent walk breaks. And Jeff has some information on his website about setting those intervals. How long should you run? How long should you walk? He has something he calls the magic mile, which allows you to run it, time it, and maybe get some recommendations on run times and walk times. I was never patient enough to do that. I just set intervals and started running and walking and kind of uh, learned on my own about what worked best for me. And I'm going to share a few tips with those with you today. Now, there's a couple of advantages to the run walk method, maybe you're not aware of. One is, is what I call conservation of energy, because you're not just running until you collapse. Uh, where you're taking frequent walk breaks, you can expand your energy over a longer distance or a longer period of time. And it allows you to actually go longer distances. I cannot do these half marathons or these trail marathons without this sort of technique. There's just no way I could do that. Uh, and I didn't start running until I was 61, and there's no way I could achieve these distances and these races without this method. So more consistent expenditure of energy allows you to go longer distances. The second advantage is because we're not running until we get really fatigued, we reduce the risk of injury. Injuries often happen when our bodies get tired, our muscles get tired, and we do something, maybe we step wrong or we do something wrong and we hurt ourselves. So it's a great way to run and, and minimize the risk of injury. The third thing run, walk, run does is allows you to experience the joys of running. You get these endorphins, you get these mental highs, and you can do that without getting exhausted or, out or without getting hurt. So it's a great way to uh, experience uh, the wonderfulness of running. Now, before we do that, you're going to need an interval timer. If you don't have one, go get one. You can put it on your iPhone or your Android phone. I have an Android phone. I have an interval timer. And basically, the way it works is you set two intervals. You, you'll set a work interval and a rest interval, what they call work and rest. In this case, it'll be run and walk. So if you set, for example, 15 seconds and 30 seconds, it'll time you for 15 seconds. Beep, time you thir for 30 seconds. Beep, time you for 15 seconds. And keep repeating that for as long for as long as you have it set. So it allows you to alternate your, your run time and your walk time very easily. And you can just listen for the beep. And, and you know you can just time to walk or time to run. As you saw in my intro there, my phone beep. And it was walk time. So I started walking. Now the question is, if you're a beginner, what kind of run time and walk time do I want to do? Again, you could try Jeff's Magic Mile. My recommendation is you've never run any. By the way, before you do that, go get a doctor's okay before you take on any kind of running or exercise program. But just start with something easy, like 15 seconds run, 15 seconds walk, and see how you do. And go from there and just experiment and keep going. But over the years, I've learned a few things as far as the ratios of run time to walk time. By ratio, I mean, what's the ratio of your run time to your walk time? For example, if you run one minute and walk 15 seconds, that's a, that's a four to one uh, time. If you run one minute and walk 30 seconds, that's a two to one ratio. So you vary those ratios d depending on certain conditions, your ability, the environmental conditions, what you're trying to achieve. And those are some of the tips I want to share with you today. So ratio rule number one, 
the longer the run time, the lower the ratio. So the distance you want, want to run plays a big factor in your ratio. The longer you want to run, the more you need to conserve your energy. You've only got so much energy, eventually it's going to falter and you're going to get tired. If you just keep running nonstop, you just collapse. So, so you want to think about conserving your energy, making it last longer. So you want to reduce that ratio a little bit. You don't want to uh, run and walk at a high ratio for a long run uh, versus a short run. A long run for me is something over five miles. Uh, so you want to reduce that ratio. You want to run a little bit less or rest a little more to help you get that long distance. Ratio rule number two. The faster the pace, the higher the ratio. Now, kind of similarly, if you want to run faster, if you want to run faster, you got to run more or walk less. So you want to reduce you want to increase that ratio. You want to run more, walk less, that increases ratio. So move your run time up a little bit. For example, you want to run a little faster. Maybe you want to run a 5K today. You want to go a little faster. Maybe you're running a one minute. Maybe you bump that up to one minute and 10 seconds or one minute and 15 seconds. Uh, or you, you take your walk time down. Maybe you're walking at 20 seconds. You reduce your walk time down to 18 or 17. You can do little increments like that and see what it, what it gains you. Ratio rule number three. The hotter it is outside, the lower the ratio. Environment plays a lot in our ratios, especially heat. Heat's bad for runners, and you just got to be careful you don't want to get heat stroke, sunstroke, or a heat exhaustion, or any of those kind of nasty things. So in that case, if you're going to be running out and it's going to be really hot, you want to reduce that ratio. You want to run less or walk more. You just want to be careful and not get overheat or overexpend yourself. So reduce that ratio if it's really hot outside. Ratio rule number four is not a rule, it's a tip. And that's the magic of the one to one ratio. Now my little tip on one to one ratio allows you to alter uh, your run walk ratio in this run. Uh, for example, I have a timer set on my interval of 15 seconds and 15 seconds. What that allows me to do is if I want to run for a minute, I'll run four 15 minute beeps and then I'll walk for 15 seconds. And maybe I'll do that for a while and then maybe I'll get longer into my run and feel like, oh, you know, I want to reduce that. I'm getting a little tired. So maybe I only run for 30 seconds and walk for 15. So by having a one-to-one -one timer, you can kind of flex your run-walk ratio very easily. So a 15 to 15 works great, or 10 to 10 or 20 to 20, whichever you think would work for you. So give that a try. Ratio tip five, the better you are running, in other words, the better condition you are, the more you can tolerate higher ratios. If you're a beginning runner, stick to lower ratios. Your ratio of run time to walk time is very dependent on your fitness level. The more fit you are, in other words, if you can run a fast pace, you can have very long run times. But if you can't, you might want to shorten your run times and, in other words, reduce that ratio. Run less, walk more, depending on your fitness level. Now, one thing Jeff recommends is never walk more than 30 seconds. He says you don't gain anything by walking more than 30 seconds, so never walk more than 30 seconds. I typically walk between 15 and 30, depending on distance and weather conditions and things like that. So as an example of my timing, I did a four mile run today. Uh, my interval was roughly, I think, a minute and 20 seconds run, uh, 20, 20 second walk, something, something like that. So that's what I do. If I were going to do a longer run, I'm going to run 10 miles, I would reduce that run time a little bit. I would probably take that down to a minute or a minute and 10 seconds. I would probably leave my walk time about the same to 20, or I might increase it to 30 depending on how I'm feeling or the weather or what's going on outside. So there's a lot of flexibility. And you, you can flex that depending on your condition, the environmental conditions, the distance you're running and those kind of factors. It's not a hard and set rule. Uh, have fun with it and play with it. So the run walk run method can be used throughout uh, your running adventures. I do not use it when I trail run. I'm also a trail runner. I do not recommend it in trail running because where I run there's a forest of trails and there's so many areas that I have to walk anyway because they're treacherous. Maybe there's some rocks or roots. So I don't use the interval timer on a trail run because I'm already taking walking breaks, trying to keep myself safe by walking some of the, some of the dangerous areas. But there's no reason you can. You can use it on a trail run. You can use it on a road run. Uh, whatever works best for you. Hey, thanks again for watching this video. If you wouldn't mind, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe icon down in the corner and, and get notified of my future videos that I release. Thanks again. Thank you.